quick show of hands, who knows how to ride a bicycle? Okay, uh, who has seen uh, the uh, Bay Wheels or formerly Ford Go Bike bicycles in San Francisco? Who has ridden one before? All right, couple, uh, do you have annual memberships? I, I, yeah, me neither, well, you, you do, okay. Um, so, um, so yeah, what happened to me is um, my colleague writes these things every day from into work and he wound up with a daily pass, 24 hours worth $10. And, but he does it every day, he has an annual pass, so he gave the day pass to me and was like, here, you can use that to ride the bike. And of course, you know, this whole getting most bang for the buck, even though I technically didn't pay a buck, I was like, what can I do in 24 hours? So um, I was sort of like scrolling around uh, the app, um, and uh, I lived in San Francisco at that point in time, there's lots of stations in San Francisco, I looked at the East Bay, I was like, I haven't been to Oakland much, I wonder, if I can go to every bike share station in the East Bay in a day. Uh, so that was basically the question that I posed myself. And um, what do you do when you, when you have questions, like uh, when, you, when, you, when you have a question, looking for an answer? First you go get data, so you go to their website. Now I'm gonna get to my inspector tool here with one hand, because the other one's holding a microphone. Uh, you go to your network tab and you see if this website actually has an API. So you just press reload, you check what, like, cross-site scripting requests. Oh yeah, map inventory. You look at what that is. Oh, sure enough, that's where you get all your stations. So you download that JSON file, uh, fire up your Jupyter notebook, book, and, um, and just try tinkering with it. So I saved the JSON file in map.json, and um, just run that so I get the, the whole JSON uh, thing that I just downloaded. Um, I wasn't prepared to have to hold my microphone, so I'm just sorting myself out here. Uh, make some data structures so that, you know, the stations, every station, thank you, has a longitude and a, la a latitude, uh, as well as a name and an ID. Can you still hear me? Does this work? Quick, okay. Um, and, uh, and then I'm parsing all my stations uh, into that data structure, and I'm starting to see that uh, in the bike share system, every station has a latitude, longitude, has this ID that starts with SF or Oak or something like that, and it has a name. And uh, then we can start doing a little bit of data science on this, sort of like a counter on the prefix, and we realize San Francisco has 128 stations. Uh, basically, they, they do this because they have different contracts with every city, so they sort of sort them for themselves, and I benefit from this. I'm realizing if I'm looking at the East Bay, and I wanna do a bike share trip everywhere in the East Bay, I gotta to have to cover OCK for Oakland, BK, BK for Berkeley, and EM for Emeryville. Those are the three cities where there's bike share stations in the East Bay. Um, so yeah, I just filter my stations list by that prefix, easy enough, and I find out 124 stations. Now, that's the point when I should have stopped, but I didn't. Because um, you, you can do a little bit of math, like 124 stations, you know, like five minutes right between them, I've got 24 hours, that's okay. At that point, someone told me, you gotta be careful, there's a two minute mandatory break between checking a bike in and checking the next bike out. They just enforce that they don't let you get the next one. So I was like, hmm, I, that should be okay, right? 124 times two minutes, but I wanna know it in hours. Whoa, that would be four hours just waiting until I can check out the next bike, sort of between trips, right? If I wanna make 124 trips, between pairs of stations. At every station I also have to wait. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I think I need to do a little more data analysis. So uh, now, now we need to get the real sort of uh, geography tooling out. So uh, Folium, I don't know. Has anyone here used Folium before? Yeah, so it's a way to just get a map into your Jupyter notebook or anywhere else. Someone's gonna come up to me later and be like, hey, there's also IPy something, something, uh, which has like two-way data binding. I don't want the two-way data binding. I actually want just output of files, so I'm gonna use Folium. You gotta humor me if you don't like it. Uh, so I, I just import Folium and, and write myself a little function that I'm gonna keep using over and over, where I find the center uh, latitude and the center longitude. I just create a map, and then I loop over my stations, and I just put them all on the map. So let's run that real quick, and then we finally get a, get a quick peek at what just the extent of the madness is. Uh, so basically, I'm gonna try to get to every single one of those points, check a bike in, check it back out, 
and then keep going. So I can kind of click on them here if you zoom in, like each one, those other stations, BK, G4, San Pablo Park, and 124 others. Did you have a guarantee that all of them would have a bike available? I did not. Did I have a guarantee that uh, all of them had a bike available? And the answer is no, I, have, I did not, but uh, they show you on the map. So as, as you're traveling, you can see how many bikes there are. And, um, but that's a really good question. Um, and we'll get to that later, because there will be a picture of a station without bikes, and it's going to be really sad. And you kind of scooped me uh, on that story now. Um, all right, so when you do this, so this problem, OK, some of you are like, what the hell is he doing? Bike share in the East Bay. If that's you, imagine these are like national parks and you're planning your next sabbatical. You want to hit all the national parks in the United States. You want to do one of those cool Europe trips, all the capitals of Europe, whatever. How do you plan a trip like that? Um, who in here has heard of the traveling salesman? No. Well-prepared audience. Uh, so yeah, the, well, the traveling salesman problem is sort of the, uh, the generic version. For me, it's like the, the silly bike share rider. Um, and uh, the, the question is, how do you hit all these stations with the least amount of effort? So it's an algorithm that uh, is sort of well studied. Uh, there's no optimal solution, really, because it's uh, NP complete or one of those kind of things. Um, so I'm not going to code up the solution, because it's going to run like 40 hours. And I was actually trying to ride the bike the day after looking at this map. So I didn't have enough time for that. But you can download this library called uh, Google OR Tools. And um, I'm just going to switch over to my uh, Jupyter Notebook, where I actually have um, the output already in there, so I don't have to keep pressing Enter here. Um, so the way this works, let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. Uh, OR tools, what's OR? Operations research, that's the academic discipline of figuring out how I can do my bike share right uh, in an optimal way. Um, I just uh, use their kind of crazy API. It's a wrapper around C++. It feels like it. You have to create a, a manager and then a routing. And, uh, and then later, we create uh, even more objects that are of questionable uh, utility. Uh, the most important thing is that you have to give it a cost function. How can, a, how can the library understand uh, what the cost to me, the bike share rider, is uh, for going from one station to another? And that's called the cost function. So what I did is I, I, call, I made one function. It's called as the bird flies. So it's just a straight line distance. Uh, I import uh, from, I, I get this uh, PyPI package called GeoPy which is for an entirely different purpose, but also has a nice function for calculating the distance between two geographical points. Um, so I get one function here that calculates for me what's the straight line distance, and then I write this wrapper function that turns that into like the kind of numbers that uh, OR tools wants from me. We set a whole bunch of weird parameters. This is literally copy and pasted from their uh, documentation, because I don't quite understand what's going on, like how you initialize the problem, the sort of local search strategies and all. You can tinker with those for a while. Uh, this line here actually runs for like, uh, in this case, two minutes, because I told it to stop after two minutes. Otherwise, it runs more like 10, uh, because we actually have a somewhat substantial uh, optimization problem on our hands with 124 stations. Uh, and then. Uh, then I can ask it, so what's the objective value? Like, and that's basically, if you sum up the cost between for each, each one of those trips that I'm making, and you already did your optimization, how far do I have to, uh, I guess, fly, since we're talking straight line? I would have to fly 65 kilometers or 40 miles. This is the list of stations I would have to travel through. And this is the visualization of it, what that looks like. So one thing you'll, you'll notice is there, there are no, no uh, intersections, where the route intersects itself. That's uh, the most basic check you can do after running a traveling salesman. Do you actually get a good solution? If the route intersects itself, it's not optimal, because you could easily sort of like split up the intersection, and you would have a shorter route. So there's an obvious optimization. Probably your algorithm was wrong. In this case, we don't have any intersections, but we have some problems. Like I have to swim through Lake Merritt. Uh, <laughs> possibly worse, I have to cycle through Piedmont which is sort of like hilly and um, a bit of a transport desert up there. Um, but it gives us a sort of a general idea of uh, what's possible. But yeah, like I said, I can't swim, I can't fly. So we need a better thing. So what I, what I really want is like for a, I don't know, this, this trip here in Emeryville, I want to know that to get from this station to this one, I actually have to follow the road. And actually, I don't want to follow this one because that's a Powell Street overpass. That's a bit of a nightmare for cyclists. So really, I would have to go around here. And like, where do you get that kind of information from your favorite mapping service, which we all know is Mapbox? Because 
you know, using a Google API is kind of like on the same level as filling out your tax return versus Mapbox, you just use it. So I used Mapbox. Uh, I don't work for them, I just kind of like their API. Uh, so they also have a PyPI package, of course, everybody does. Uh, an access token that I specifically didn't uh, break the line on so that you don't see the end of it, thinking about that, but thanks for calling me out on it. Good security practice is very important. And then, uh, you know, some data structures, every route has a distance and a duration, it has a polyline, which is just like the number of dots that I'm traveling along. And, um, and then sort of a function that translates the JSON stuff that Mapbox returns to me in a response when I ask it for the route between any two points into one of those data things. So don't worry too much about it. It's just like sort of like the usual helper code that Python is sort of so helpful at, at writing. Then I write a thing um, that uh, basically helps me make a better cost function for my next run of this optimization. So what I'm doing here is that I loop over uh, every, over all the stations pairwise. So I use iter tools, combinations, give it a number two, so it gives me every combination of stations that's possible in the set, with, given the set of 124 stations. Uh, I loop over them, I see what the straight line distance is, and if that straight line distance is uh, less than a mile and a half, I actually look at the correct, I ask Mapbox what the route between them is. If it's longer than that, it's like so outlandish, I, didn't, I wouldn't want to write it during my trip, so I just discard that and don't even ask and sort of pretend it's super far and tell the algorithm like, nah, we don't do that, that's like going to the moon. But for every stage, pair of stations that's within reason, I now get the actual uh, distance between them. So I, I did that in a loop. It's actually super quick, it only takes like 20 minutes to get those. The monthly limit of the free tier is 100,000 requests. I only did 10,000, so we're good. And this is sort of like a random sampling of those uh, as the bird flies connections that got replaced. So notice there's none of them, none of them is like, there's no connection from Berkeley like to Fruitvale because that would be too far to even ask Mapbox. So I didn't do that. And I get little routes like this specific one out. So this is actually the, one of the Emeryville ones where I kind of have to go around the, the track. So the blue thing is, uh, is how I would get from this point here to that point here. I can't fly across the Ikea parking lot. I actually have to go all the way around. And this is the kind of thing Mapbox gives me. If you zoom all the way in, you see it's uh, just line segments connected. So that's what I'll be using which now allows me to get to take two of the traveling salesman. I just write a new cost function here, which says uh, try to find in that data that I scraped from Mapbox uh, whether that pair of stations is in there. Keep in mind I had to do every pair twice because sometimes going in one direction between two stations is a different biking route than the other because it might be a one-way street or because the stations are on one side, it just makes sense to go around the block or something like that. So I looked that up. If I find it, I use it. If I don't find it, I tell the algorithm, it's crazy far and I'm telling it something like, oh yeah, every meter takes me like five minutes or something stupid like that. Uh, Copy and pasted the code that I used earlier above to just solve the problem again. It's gonna run five minutes again. I'm gonna spare you the wait. Uh, the total duration that I get, so now we switched from distance to duration because I have that information from Mapbox now, like how long the actual bike ride is gonna be. It's telling me it's six hours, uh, six and sort of a half, six and a half hours of total cycling time. Keep in mind, we have to add like four hours of waiting at the stations to switch out the bike. So uh, this is the route it gives me. And if you actually look at it on the map, that's exactly what we wanted, right? It's like the bike, the, the routes are following the roads, so I, uh, it looks like a sort of optimal thing, kind of, um, and it's following the roads. We now have intersections, and the thing is, now that's actually okay, because what we see on the map, the distance on the map, is not the true reflection of the cost that it takes me to travel this. So actually, uh, we're, like the actual solution happens in some kind of hyperspace where there's no intersection, but when we project it onto the map, there are now intersections are possible. Um, there's some sort of theory, if you have a continuous mapping function between your cost function and the geographical distance, that should not happen. In my case, I do not have that continuous feature, so I get it. Fine, uh, so uh, one thing that's still kind of annoying, uh, if you zoom in to places like downtown Oakland where the stations are close to each other, I would have these rides that are like, I don't know, 20 seconds. I don't want that, I'm just kind of particular like that, so I'm gonna rewrite my cost function once more, and I actually penalize it for, um, for trips that are shorter than two minutes. If it's shorter than 120 seconds, I'm gonna say, you know, like a one, one, one minute trip is as good as a three minute trip, a one and a half minute trip is as good as a two and a half minute trip, but uh, you know, and everything else uh, stays the same. So we're gonna do that, we run the whole algorithm again, get a slightly different trip, and then we just say, all right, let's save that map into a file. I put that file onto a GitHub page where I published it for myself. This is the actual route I did. 
I also wrote a little function that gives me an actual itinerary where you can see um, where I assume I start at 9.30, which is sort of a time when I normally start things, um, and then at what time I need to be at which station all the way uh, where they are, and then a Google Maps link on, on the end. So I've got all this stuff. Again, this is just a screenshot of that map that I just showed you. Uh, it's the morning of the 24th of June of 2018. <laughs> um, I, this is the plan. First, go down to Fruitvale, come back to Oakland, West Oakland, and kind of go up through Emeryville to Berkeley, down and up again, back to Berkeley main campus, all the way around zigzag back down to Oakland. Start and stop is at uh, Frank H. Ovaga station, which is at uh, 12th Street and Broadway BART station, some, a place I could get to easily in the morning. Um, I sort of, this is the printout, I got that ready. First thing I did in the morning, double check, like, what's the system health? Only one station that doesn't have any bikes right now, the red one on, on the mobile app, but that's one where I get to in the afternoon, so that will probably be taken care of. Uh, checking the weather, put on some sunscreen, because it's gonna be a nice day. Uh, activate the pass, now I'm all in. Smug smiley at the start of the trip. Uh, this is uh, downtown Oakland. Uh, I actually made it there earlier. I basically couldn't sleep. I was so excited. Um, beginning of the trip down to Fruitvale, I was like a tourist. I'd never been to Fruitvale. I took like photos. Um, <laughs> after a while, this is like three hours into riding. Uh, I, I, I actually added like the time of when I was truly at the station and sort of checked them off. I was kind of falling behind. So at that point, I was like, okay, I got to catch up. No more selfies, no more photos or anything. Uh, I actually set myself a timer when I checked the bike in so I don't have to sort of estimate what the two minutes are. Really got, got efficient here. This is me and sort of like tortured look after I hit the southernmost, the easternmost, the, and the westernmost uh, station of the trip. And I'm like, this isn't going to happen because I still haven't done half of the stations and it's already half past two in the afternoon. Uh, part of the reason is that all the short trips are later, but it still felt kind of wrong. The only thing that kept me going is really this whole OR tools magic. I was still more or less on schedule. And I assumed if it had been right so far, it's probably going to be right all the way to 10.30 when this whole thing is finally supposed to be over. So I kept going. Uh, this is me at like the northernmost point, kind of smiling, but not really. Um, I got a coffee uh, on Berkeley campus. Um, the, really, the takeaway here is the shadows are kind of getting longer. It's getting evening. I'm still up in Berkeley and have to do all of downtown Oakland. Um, then comes the empty station. This is actually Telegraph Ave at 58th Street. I show up there, no bikes there. I figure if I put my bike in there, someone's going to come around the corner, take my bike, and then what? So I didn't actually check in on that station. I just waited there, took the photo, kept going. Slowly making it back down to Oakland. MacArthur Station here, uh, the sun is setting. This is me looking at the second to last station back in downtown Oakland. I'm sort of happy. There's a bit of a sad part to this whole thing. At this point, I did not know that I had just missed two stations. Uh, basically, the map in downtown Oakland had so many sort of like nooks and crannies. I guess I was too tired. My tweets that I fired off had lots of typos at that point in time. It's like 10 p.m. But um, Look, I made it. <laughs> this is literally the selfie I took when I made it back to Frank Ovaga Plaza, where I just started, like, earlier. Um, it was an amazing day. You know, I checked everything off here. I even revisited the one station that was under maintenance in the morning. I kind of did, like, a little detour in the evening to check that off. I saw lots of street art. I learned all about the different ways you can park bike share bikes. Uh, I didn't know that there's diagonal parking and doubling up and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the longest trip of the day was down in Fruitvale, 10 minutes. I burned 59 calories on that one. Uh, the app tells you all that kind of stuff. The shortest one was just a one-minute little hop uh, on Telegraph Avenue. Uh, the estimated time, using like Mapbox data, OR tools and whatever, was 12 hours and 48 minutes. I actually rode 13 hours and two minutes. I'm not kidding. I took a 15-minute lunch at my work. So it was basically spot on, which is kind of amazing, like, because like, how could that be? But it, it worked. Uh, of that time, six hours 43 were spent um, uh, actually riding go bikes. My hands were basically black from these shitty, grimy uh, handlebars. Um, the time between rentals, therefore, must have been six hours and five minutes. So I've 
basically been slacking off uh, because it could have been just four hours. Uh, the distance, I didn't actually have time to do the analysis just before preparing this talk. It's about 90 kilometers, like 60 miles. I crossed Telegraph Avenue eight times, and I'm still not quite sure why. But on five of those crossings, I swear, I met the same person who was walking Telegraph Avenue from <laughs> Oakland to, to Berkeley. It was super weird. Um, I like I said, I checked in at 121 stations, one I skipped, and then and two, uh, I don't know what happened there. I only found out I missed the stations because you get 10 Alaska airline miles for each trip you take, and I checked in the evening if I have the miles that I expected, and I had 20 miles less than I was expecting. That's how I found out that I missed stations. It's like, it's like double whammy, right? And now I have to like, write even more until I finally get this Alaska airline flight. Um, so weird, funny thing happened, actually, a little, so this is sort of the end of the talk, but um, I had to scrape that JSON file. I set it up to scrape every five minutes, and I, for I forgot to stop scraping. So since mid-2018, I've been scraping the system health of bay wheels every five minutes. And I just recently <laughs> found that on my AWS. It's kind of weird. So I can tell you how many stations they added in the past year and a half. <laughs> San Francisco, big growth. Uh, San Jose, big growth. Not much going on in the East Bay, actually. I could basically do that same trip again today, and I would only have one, one additional station, as far as I can tell. Uh, number of bikes, that's actually super interesting because they added e-bikes at some point and then the brakes kind of failed so they took them out of service. <laughs> then they added them back, then they caught fire and then they stopped. It's I, it, the, the, the chart ends in September. It's actually getting much better right now because they're facing e-bikes back in, at least here in San Francisco. So the system is actually in pretty, pretty good shape as far as I can tell. If you have the data every five minutes, you can actually plot every single day as a column. And you see the big trends, like adding e-bikes, where there's a lot more bikes, and the color gets bluer and darker. And you can also see like the daily trends, like these little, like where it gets brighter, the little boxes. That's commute hours. It always like, it's like five days, and then two days where it doesn't happen. Five days, and then you can even find the holidays in here. This is when the bikes are out in the system and not in the station. So you can see all these patterns, and you can also see where weird maintenance events took place, like in that. Second row up here, something must have happened in the night, so bikes suddenly disappeared in big, uh, big quantities, but uh, across multiple days. Sponsors, uh, available bike, uh, uh, bikes and all that. Uh, I should wrap up because I'm over time. So these are the Python packages I used for this silly endeavor. If you want to plan any other trip, a really good one that I want to do at some point, there's a public data set of trees, all the street trees in San Francisco. You can actually, now I have to, um, I think the, so, so there's, I think, 63 California buckeyes in San Francisco, as far as I know. That's a tree that's poisonous to European honeybees, but not American ones. My colleague told me that today. And I, I kind of want to do a hike through San Francisco just to see all the California buckeyes. So that's the next thing I'm going to do with this. If you have any ideas for stupid hikes or bike rides or anything uh, that you, that you want to do or that you want some, some idiot to do, uh, let me know, and I might actually do it. Uh, this is my email address at the bottom. That's how you can reach me here. It's like sort of links related to this whole uh, nonsense. Uh, thank you for listening.